The Fermi Paradox, Part 12, Rare Earth, or not, a good galaxy? At the grandest level, the Rare Earth Hypothesis argues that just as the Earth orbits within a habitable zone around the Sun, so the Sun orbits within a habitable zone in our own galaxy. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is a swirling spiral of 200 billion stars 100,000 light years across, about a million trillion kilometers. The solar system lies at roughly 56,000 light years from the galactic center, about two thirds of the way to the edge, and orbits once every 220 odd million years. This region, not too far out and not too far in, is analogous to the habitable zone around a star. Stars in the bustling center of the galaxy are jostled and tossed about by their fellows, and are more likely to have planets torn from them by stellar encounters. Also, a denser concentration of stars places any nascent life in the path of supernovae, exploding stars that can sterilize a planet's surface with radiation. Conversely, stars near the edge of the galaxy have much lower metallicities than those farther in, suggesting that they would not be likely planet hosts. Other galactic dead zones, as Warden Brownlee called them, were globular clusters, the densely packed bundles of ancient stars that inhabit our galaxy's outer halo. These stars are so tightly packed together that their gravity would fling any planets out of their orbit. However, the concept of the galactic habitable zone has been called into question by several researchers. In 2006, astronomer Nikos Pranzos calculated that the threat from supernova explosions only increased from 1 to about 4 per billion years across the galactic disk, a long enough time for complex life to have a renaissance should one occur too close to the planet's surface. Also, the sheer number of stars in the core region of the galaxy meant that, regardless of any heightened risk, it was still more likely that any habitable planets would be found there than in our sparser neighborhood. As icing on the cake, in 2003, a planetary system was located in the globular cluster M4, showing that even they are not necessarily dead zones. And so with that, our examination of the rare earth hypothesis comes to a close. To sum up, while some ideas argued as part of the rare earth hypothesis have stood up to scrutiny, no one, for instance, seriously questions that Earth would be unsuited for life if it were the size of Mars. Most of its more idiosyncratic hypotheses have been shown to be, if not false, then at least highly questionable. Beyond this, many astronomers and astrobiologists challenge the base assumption of rare Earth, that because complex life on Earth required a specific chain of events to occur, then complex life on every planet would require the exact same chain of events. There is no reason to assume that civilization on an alien planet could not emerge from a completely different collection of factors that, in combination, happen to produce the same results. A wooden bowl, a metal bowl, and a plastic bowl are all still bowls, despite the radically different processes of formation. Rare Earth's argument has been compared to the argument for intelligent design, that because complexity can emerge from a conscious agency, all complexity must emerge from a conscious agency. In fact, it was later revealed after the book's publication that one of Warden Brownlee's sources was Guillermo Gonzalez, an intelligent design advocate. Implicit in any attempt to challenge the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence is the elevation of the human race to a position of importance. We may be lonely in an empty galaxy, but we would still be the rulers of all we survey. Some may find comfort in that, but comfort should never drive the search for scientific truth. The universe is what the universe is regardless of what we may want it to be. But the scientific search for extraterrestrial life is not all about rendering life trivial. Implicit in its findings are some truly remarkable facts about life and our position in the universe, and we will be exploring those in the next episode.